Yo, what is going on, everyone? My name is Nick or the Notorious Fantasy, and in today's video for you guys, week 15 wide receiver start or sit decisions for fantasy football in 2020. Inside of this video, we are going to be going over every single matchup from Thursday night football through the Saturday games, Sunday games, and all the way until Monday night football and discuss whether you should start or sit the wide receivers in each and every single matchup. Now, before we get deep into this video, I'd like to ask if that at any point in this video, you end up having a great time, you end up enjoying it, please make sure to hit that subscribe button down below not only is it free i put out content every single day to help you guys win that 2020 fantasy football championship and if you're not new if you could please hit that like button down below that would really help me out a whole ton so before we get into it as well i'd like to give you guys a quick word from my friends and my sponsor over at overlaydfs.com OverlayDFS.com offers a variety of games on their website. It's my favorite way to play daily fantasy sports on the internet. They have the matchup shop, which I typically talk about, where you have one player versus another, plus or minus a certain amount of fantasy points. You pick one, and you put as much money on that matchup as you want, as low as like a dollar, and as high as, I believe, $500 plus. But this week, I want to talk about the quarterback shootout, because I won a lot of money on this last week, and it is very, very simple. All you have to do is you're going to get a bunch of matchups on on your screen and all you have to do is pick five out of the 10 to 12 that show up on your screen and if you get them all right the prize is very very big the top 10 percent win 50 dollars first place gets 500 dollars now obviously i didn't win 500 dollars even going five and oh because three other people won but that is still a decent amount of money my other ones went four and one and the other one went four and one as well so i made a combined 300 dollars on overlay dfs last week it is very very simple you just pick who scores more fantasy points player versus player that's how easy it is you guys do all this research all week long to win your fantasy matchup so why not win some extra cash on top of it on overlaydfs.com and we are back let's get into it week 15 wide receiver start or sit decisions we begin with thursday night football the los angeles chargers at the las vegas raiders start of this game is going to be Keenan Allen for the Los Angeles Chargers. I just don't feel ultra confident with the surrounding cast in Los Angeles. Mike Williams is limited in practice, and if he does even end up suiting up on Thursday, which obviously limits him definitely because if he's limited in practice, doesn't seem like he's going to be good to go. If he does play, in my opinion, that's not the greatest start for fantasy football. Plus, Mike Williams is already one of those fantasy football players that when you play him, he kind of either does really good or really bad. There's really no in-between for Mike Williams. Some games he's making contested catches looking like Julio Jones other games he's dropping the ball and just not getting looks so I feel much safer with Keenan Allen for the Los Angeles Chargers this game should be a back and forth affair and that should be able to put Keenan Allen very high on the point total for this week for the Las Vegas Raiders I like Nelson Aguilar in this matchup now it's definitely difficult on a weekly basis to try to predict which wide receiver from Las Vegas will be able to be getting it done will it be Renfro will it be Ruggs or will it be Aguilar but recently Aguilar has really been that step above that upper echelon of wide receiver for this offense. So I feel like uh, Raiders wide receiver Nelson Aguilar will be the best start out of that group and is still a solid fantasy football start for this week. Now on to the Saturday slate of games. We begin with the Buffalo Bills at the Denver Broncos. In this one, I like two Bills wide receivers. I like Cole Beasley as well as Stephon Diggs. Now Stephon Diggs really hasn't been blowing up thus far this season and having those tremendous games that we've seen him have in Minnesota. He has been just roughly a pretty safe wide receiver on a weekly basis that you throw into your lineup and he's never going to bend you over the table and fuck you right in the ass but he typically doesn't do that to your opponent he's just a safe option that you play in your wide receiver one or two spot every single week and there's really nothing to be mad about on a weekly basis up against the Denver Broncos there's definitely things to be happy about though because this could be a game where Stefan Diggs really has his big game in Buffalo or one of his bigger games because he has had some pretty good games this season but overall he's just a safe wide receiver Cole Beasley did kind of get cucked by Gabriel Davis last week, but I think Cole Beasley will be back in red, ready to be fired up this week up against the Denver Broncos. This is a game that I expect the Bills to really be pouring on the points, Salt Bay style, all over the Denver Broncos defense for the Broncos. It seems like Jerry Judy has not been good. To be honest with you. He has not been good this season. He was drafted to be the number two on this Broncos team behind Cortland Sutton and potentially have the skill set to eval to 
elevate him to be the number one guy on the team. Now, I'm not saying he doesn't have the skill set anymore, but what I'm saying is right now in his rookie season, he isn't playing well enough to be worthy of a start. Same thing goes with KJ Hamler. Now, if you're in a super deep league, I would consider Hamler, but the safest option in this whole offense is wide receiver Tim Patrick. Patrick has been playing very effectively the last two weeks and has been scoring tugs like it's his job, and it is, so I like Tim Patrick here. Up against the Buffalo Bills next game here, we got the Carolina Panthers at the Green Bay Packers. Now, DJ Moore is probably 50-50, I would say, for this game because he's on that COVID protocol. It's potential that he could miss. There's obviously potential that he ends up playing, but with the Panthers wide receivers, it seems like Curtis Samuel has really elevated himself even past DJ Moore in a lot of these games. DJ Moore is also going to be playing up against much better coverage than uh, a guy like Curtis Samuel, and it seems like Teddy Bridgewater really likes throwing the ball to Samuel, so Samuel is going to be a start this week with or without DJ Moore playing. Same thing goes with Robbie Anderson. I feel like Robbie Anderson could be in for another big game here up against the Green Bay Packers. Packers wide receiver Mr. Devontae Adams is obviously a locked and loaded start on a weekly basis. You can't do any type of mental gymnastics to kind of will your way around starting Devontae Adams. This guy has just been a beast all season long, went healthy, and will continue to be a beast in this game up against the Carolina Panthers. Other Packers receivers, Alan Lazard, MVS, just just, uh, I mean, you just can't really start them. A Lazard or Scantling could have a huge game here. Or some other receiver could. I just don't feel ultra confident in any of those guys. Seems like a coin flip on a weekly basis, which one of those will end up producing. Next game here, we got the San Francisco 49ers at the Dallas Cowboys. What a barn burner of a game this one will be. But Brandon Ayuk with Debo Samuel likely out for the remainder of the 2020 NFL season has pushed himself up to an amazing spot here up against the bum-ass Dallas Cowboys. I think that Ayuk is really going to take advantage of this opportunity opportunity that he's garnered here in this offense and be able to just go to fucking town on the 49ers now normal or on the Dallas Cowboys I probably would have called this one the Eiffel Tower matchup where Debo and Brandon Ayuk form over the Cowboys defense and triple pump them all the way to death but I think that without Debo Samuel Brandon Ayuk will be able to do great in this matchup up against a bum Dallas defense while this Cowboys offense has been moving like fucking slugs across the field Amari Cooper has still been balling out on the usual, so I feel as though he is a worthy of a start this week up against the San Francisco 49ers. The 49ers don't really have any other wide receivers of name that I feel like are going to have big games here, so those guys are going to be sits as well as Cowboys wide receivers C.D. Lam and Michael Gallup. It just seems like with Andy Dalton under center, these other guys have kind of been cucked out of an opportunity unless Dak was to return, but he obviously won't because he's out for the rest of the season. Next game here, we got the Seattle Seahawks at the Washington football team, and this is a matchup that while seems like, oh my god, Seattle's going to score 7 million points. I wouldn't be surprised if this was a very close matchup. And this one could definitely be a lower scoring type of matchup, but I still feel as though you have to be starting DK Metcalf on a weekly basis, regardless if he's going up against a tougher defense in the NFL. I still feel like Metcalf will be able to get it done up against the Washington football team. Other receiver for the Seattle Seahawks, Tyler Lockett, has been the king of inconsistency. This is a guy I talked about last week how it's going to be so easy to avoid this guy in your 2021 fantasy football drafts. I am going to close my eyes and not even look anywhere near him in whatever round he goes in next season due to this consistent inconsistency. He's consistent at being fucking inconsistency. DK Metcalf is consistent at being consistent. I don't, I I like Tyler Lockett in this game, but again, there's definitely ways that this guy could fuck you right in the ass because he just simply is very on or off on a weekly basis. Speaking of on or off, Terry McLaurin has been ice cold the last two weeks. I'm not talking about how he's Matty Ice. Like when Matthew Ryan, uh, quarterback of the Atlanta Falcons, was on fire, just playing amazing a couple of years ago on that trail to winning the Super Bowl, which they inevitably lost 28-3. Everyone remembers that. But Terry McLaurin has been frozen. This guy is just like the fucking glacier that sunk the goddamn Titanic type of deal here, the iceberg. That's how Terry McLaurin has been, but I feel as though up against the Seattle Seahawks defense, this could be a revitalization game for Terry McLaurin. I think he plays quite well up against the Seattle Seahawks. David Moore, backup uh, Seattle wide receiver, is going to be a sit. He sure probably will end up scoring in this game because he scores every couple of games, but he's a sit, and Cam Sims, other Washington receiver, is going to be a sit for me next game. But here, we got the Chicago Bears at the Minnesota Vikings. Last time we saw these two teams square off inside of that gridiron we saw nine inch Nicholas Nick 
Nine Inch Nick Foles, Nine Inch Nicholas Foles, end up getting hurt, and that's when the next game, Mitch Trubisky started to take over. So the Vikings really rolled, rolled the Bears like a fucking blunt, but I think in this matchup, we see a much different Bears team, and we see a pretty solid Vikings team as well. I think Allen Robinson is able to easily put up a nice point total up against the Minnesota Vikings. Now, when it comes to the Vikings wide receivers, the biggest issue with this offense is their rushing attack. If Dalvin Cook is rushing the ball 7 million times, running circles, circles around the Chicago Bears defense that I worry for Jefferson as well as Adam Thielen, but there's no way in all fuck you can convince yourself to sit Justin Jefferson or Adam Thielen after they've pretty much been on tears every single game. They definitely have those down games every once in a while. Last week was that up against Tampa Bay, Tom Brady last week, but I do think Jefferson and Adam Thielen took an L last week, but it's time to bounce back like their name was Big Sean. Anthony Miller is going to be a sit for me as well as Darnell. Here comes the Monet as well as Cordero Patterson, these other Bears wide receivers just are not on the same playing field as a guy like Allen Robinson. Next matchup here, we got the New England Deflatriots at my Miami Dolphins. If you guys have ended up enjoying this video thus far, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below if you're new. And if you're not new, please make sure to hit that like button. Devontae Parker is a start if he plays, in my opinion. We saw last year Devontae Parker legitimately made Stefan Gilmore look like his fucking son. He made Stefan Gilmore look like a little bitch, and Devontae Parker slapped him up a couple of times, forehand and backhand, this time up against the Patriots. Will he even end up playing? I have no idea. What I've read online is there's news that is trending towards him going and playing, so that's why he's listed as a start up against the New England Patriots as the main weapon of the Miami Dolphins. The Patriots weapons, Demir Bird and Jacoby Myers are just weapons that have been nerfed like it's a fucking video game they went from being these or Jacoby Myers went from being a fully loaded uh AR-15 fucking killing machine an AK-47 type of deal to becoming a fucking water gun that's what he has turned into this season going up against the tough Miami Dolphins defense I do not see that changing same thing goes for Demir Bird Lynn Bowden is listed as a running back on some website so I do really like him as a running back this week especially if the other running backs don't go maybe Burrito will play but Salvin Ahmed and Gaskin are definitely on the up and up on depending on if they're going to end up suiting up on Sunday up against the Patriots. Matt Collins, other Dolphins wide receiver is going to be listed as a sit for me as well. Next matchup here, we got the Jacksonville Jaguars at the Baltimore Ravens. This is just a whole game of sitting everyone down. Jaguars wide receiver DJ Chark just has not been the same Chark from last season. Was that because they sat down Mr. Minshew Mania, Minshew Gardner, that is, for the last couple of weeks? Maybe. Is it because he just isn't that guy? Maybe. Or is it just because this offense looks a lot different this year? Probably a fucking amalgamation of all three. So I do think DJ Chark is a fine wide receiver for next year's fantasy football. But as of right now, going up against the tough Baltimore Ravens, he is going to be a sit for me. Hollywood! Marquise Hollywood Brown is on the co vid IR, which means he's not going to be suiting up on Sunday, which means you have to be sitting him, Willie Sneed, and the smorgasbord of other dumbass wide receivers on Baltimore are going to be sits for me. Keelan Cole and LaVishka, I just feel like the Jaguars stand no chance up against a tough Baltimore Ravens defense next game. Here we got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Tampa Bay Thomas Brady at the Atlanta Falcons, a matchup from the Super Bowl a bunch of years ago where Tom Brady was up or down by a zillion. Atlanta Falcons were up by a million and Tampa Bay Tom Brady who was New England Tom Brady mass hole Tom Brady back then ended up defeating the Atlanta Falcons so Matty Ice is going to be mad in this game but he's probably not going to be very successful because this offense looks bad news bears bad news bears without Julio it just seems to be if they don't have Julio starting, the team looks like complete and utter dick cheese. They go out dry on a weekly basis. Chris Godwin and Mike Evans, though, are definitely very safe up against a very bad Falcons defense. You could probably even convince yourself into starting Antonio Brown, though. I will not tout him as a start in this game. Uh, Calvin Ridley should be a safe start, though, without Julio Jones. Should be good to go on a weekly basis. You just auto-throw him into your lineup. Russell Gage is a guy that threw a tug last week to Calvin Ridley. Guy has an absolute cannon. He's playing like better than Matt Ryan at points in that game but I do think Russell Gage is going to be a sit here up against a tougher Tampa Bay defense next game here we got the Detroit Lions at the Le Titans and I like both Titans wide receivers in this matchup while Corey Davis was coming off of an absolute heater two weeks ago dropping 35 points looking like a steal the next game I'm like oh my god the Titans against the Jags I'm getting close I'm gonna start CJ or fucking Corey Davis I'm gonna nut all over my screen and in reality the only nut
nutting that happened was Corey Davis right on my fucking face like my name was Mia Malkova because I started him in a bunch of leagues and he fucked me right in the ass in my no-no square where I did not want it. But this week, this week, this week, I see a bounce back game out of Mr. Corey Davis. Not as going to be ranked as high as last week though. AJ Brown is a must start on a weekly basis. This guy was wearing a Julio Jones fucking jersey in practice before that game because this guy is mini Julio Jones. Mini, whatever you want to call him. He's a fucking god. He is very good at playing the wide receiver position in the NFL and going up against the Detroit Lions. Elevates you even further. Marvin Jones is going to be a sit for me as well as Danny Amendola. Now, if Matthew Stafford ends up suiting up, I am a bit more confident in Marvin Jones. But if not, I'd rather just stay away from the two Lions stooges. Next game here, we got the Houston Texans at the Indianapolis Colts. And in this one, I like Kiki. Do you love me? Cootie. Cootie did look all right last week, but Chad Henson, local fucking frat boy stole the show last week. Chad Hansen did his best hazing last week to that defense, and I think that Chad Hansen will not be as sharp of a start this week. He has had two weeks in a row of seven targets, and I could definitely see that happening again, but with it seeming like Brandon Cooks is expected to return in this matchup, I will temper my expectations for Mr. Hansen and sit him down like Chris Hansen does to those people who are sick fucks. Kiki Cootie will be a listed start for me for the Colts. T.Y. Hilton, as well as Michael Pittman, should be able to form that Eiffel Tower over that Houston Texans defense and play very well. T.Y. Hilton is on a heater like no other. Next game here, we got the Philadelphia Eagles at the Arizona Cardinals. The battle of the birds. Call, call, motherfucker, Eagles at the Arizona Cardinals. I like DeAndre Hopkins big in this matchup. The Eagles defense hasn't looked bad but it hasn't really looked good either. And DeAndre Hopkins is matchup proof. It doesn't matter who's up against him. He's going to make Darius Slay look like a little bitch boy up against Mr. DeAndre Hopkins for the Eagles. Jalen Rager, as well as Greg Ward and um, Alshon Jeffrey are going to be sits to me in this matchup. I do think Hertz is able to play well in this matchup, but I think it's going to be mostly due to his rushing prowess in this offense. Christian Kirk is going to be a sit for me for the Cardinals next game. Here we got the New York football Jets at the Los Angeles Rams in this one. I like both Rams wide receivers woods as well as cup are going up against one of the worst defenses in the nfl up against one of the dumbest coaches in nfl history adam gaze and i expect this one to get dangerous for the rams wide receivers woods and cup are smash starts on the week rashad perryman jamison crowder denzel mims all these jets wide receivers sure they may be good next year with trevor fucking lawrence but under adam gaze with sam darnold up against one of the better defenses in the nfl this screams no go for perryman crowder and denzel mims next game here we got what should be Sunday night football, but it's the final four o'clock game on Sunday slate. The Chiefs at the New Orleans Saints. I like Tariq Hill in this matchup a whole bunch, even up against the Miami Dolphins when they're containing the Kansas City Chiefs pretty well. This guy still goes to pound town and has sexual intercourse with the Dolphins defense through their fucking blowhole. I think Tyreek Hill blows a load all over the New Orleans Saints defense, just like he's been doing all year long for the Chiefs. For the Saints, Michael Thomas is must start on a weekly basis. Taysom Hill, Drew Brees, Jameis Winston, it doesn't fucking matter. Michael Thomas by a zillion. Up against the Chiefs is no easy matchup, but I still think Thomas should be able to play quite well. Sammy Ida, W. Watkins, Demarcus Robinson, Mecole Hardman are all going to be sits for the Kansas City Chiefs. For the Saints, I don't really trust anyone besides Michael Thomas if Taysom Hill is indeed under center like I believe he will be. Next game here we got Monday or Sunday night football because you waited all day for Sunday night. Hope I don't get fucking copyright striked for singing just like the lady who sings that beautiful tune every Sunday night. Jarvis Landry going up against the Giants, probably going up against Bradbury is a scary matchup, no doubt, but I still think he is going to be able to get it done up against the Giants. The rest of this game, just sit them all down on the fucking pine. Rashad Higgins played pretty solid last week. I highly doubt that happens again. All the Giants are not going to be looking good with the GOAT Colt McCoy under center for the Giants because Danny Dimes, Danny Stumbles, Danny Fumbles is likely going to be missing this matchup and is reported as doubtful. So Shepard, Tate, and Slayton can ride the bench on my team. Final game here, Monday Night Football between these Steelers at the Cincinnati Bengals. We all know that Juju Smith-Schuster always lights it up like fucking Lil Wayne before he records his song with the fucking lighter flicker. 
that type of thing is what Juju does to the Bengals. Juju's going to play humongous here up against the Bengals. Now, Deontay Johnson is a curious case for the Steelers. Personally, I'm sitting him down. I am a very risky player, but I am not too sure about what is going to happen because this guy, clearly, the fumbleitis is just going to be there. The lube that is on his hands, this motherfucker is just doused in that hot and cold fucking lube that you can buy from the goddamn local CVS. That's what Deontay Johnson has on his hands because he just drops the fucking ball all the time, and it makes no sense. Deontay Johnson might be the best wide receiver ever who can't catch the goddamn ball, so I don't really know what to do with Deontay Johnson. I see the upside here is very high in the rankings. He's going to be like a top 18 wide receiver, but the risk is immense with Deontay Johnson this week. Chase Claypool don't love him up against Cincinnati, but I still think he's going to be able to get it done. But I do think James uh, Washington will be involved in this offense. Tyler Boyd, as well as Titty Boy T. Higgins, are going to be sits because since um, Burrow went down, it just hasn't looked too hot for the Bengals. And with the shitty quarterback play versus one of the best defenses in the NFL. This one could get ugly on Monday night. So thank you guys all so much for watching this video. If at any point you ended up chuckling, you ended up having a great time, please make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. Not only is it free, I put out this content every single day to help you guys win that 2020 Fantasy Football Championship. So have a great rest of your guys' day. I bid you adieu. I love you all. Overlay DFS.com. Link down below in the description. Have a great rest of your guys' day as always. Good boy.